Jalshimer, or Pong. Uh, we're going to be discussing Joseph Boys and Transcendental Black Metal Band Liturgy. The abstract for the paper is the Black Metal Band Liturgy through the direction of Hunter Hunt Hendricks, from now on Hunter, uh, has, adapted to, has attempted to elevate the genre from the dark bars of rock venues into the white walls of the art world. Hunter's work, I argue, with liturgy and paraliturgy combines extreme heavy metal music with Joseph Boy's inspired contemporary art to express a Nietzschean transcendence from the nihilism and uh, reactionary visual art ghetto traditionally found within the genre of black metal. So what we're going to try to cover in the next nine minutes or so is conceptual art, black metal, black metal aesthetics, transcendental black metal, the influence of boys, and new venues. Uh, so let's start with a definition of conceptual art. We'll go with the artist Solowitz, as it was the first to appear in print. Quote, in conceptual art, the idea or concept is the most important aspect of the work. When an artist uses a conceptual form of art, it means that all the planning and decisions are made beforehand, and the execution is a perfunctory affair. The idea becomes a machine that makes the art, unquote. So in this image here, we have Joseph Boys and 7,000 Oaks from Castle, Germany. He placed 7,000 basalt stones in front of city, city Hall, and they could only be removed as oak trees were planted around uh, with very specific, uh, specific and precise instructions for the placement of the stones. It is important to stress that black metal is not a unified monolithic culture. The genre takes many shapes and ideological stances ranging from Cascadian black metal based in the Columbia River watershed here and is united in, it, uh, in the ideology of deep ecology to French band Festin Noir with a national socialist ideology influenced by religious Satanism. Uh, it is important, however, to stress that black metal must be understood as a coherent cultural and artistic framework encompassing the, the genre sonically, visually, and ideologically even when the ideologies are completely separated between anarchism and national socialist Satanism. Um, the end product can only be fully comprehended when observing all the parts of the sum. In other words, even though the fonts that are used are ineligible, uh, or the vocals are undecipherable, and the band's ideology isn't prevalent, it must all be taken into consideration when addressing the popular uh, cultural production. Black metal is very consciously began with horrific or lo-fi production levels and sounds as a rejection of mainstream culture and religious influence modernization in the Scandinavian countries where the first wave of bands uh, were from. This Hyperborean black metal was a break, both visually and sonically, from any prior form of metal, as scholar Benjamin Olson writes, quote, virtually all earlier forms of metal music had emphasized clarity, energy, and virtuosity. Black metal music is dense, deeply distorted, and cacophonous. Black metal exchanges the guitar solo's technical wizardry and song structure of traditional metal for a buzzing, droning wall of sound. Abrasive, meandering, and extremely dark, black metal is often completely impenetrable to the casual listener." Unquote. So this new style of music is intentionally unlistenable to the average person. And, and actions such as so uh, faux or pseudo-religious uh, Satanism, the wearing of corpse paint, the torching of churches, they're mere reactions against a society that the participants no longer felt a part of. Liturgy is a project of former Columbia University philosophy student Hunter, Hunter Hendricks, uh, and actively engages in the musical genre in an attempt to transcend the normative nihilistic behavior so prominent within metal scenes at large. In 2009, at Hideous Gnosis, the Black Metal Theory Symposium, Hunter, as the only speaker actively engaged and the, act, uh, and the cultural production of black metal read his manifesto entitled Transcendental Black Metal, uh, a vision of apocalyptic humanism that asked participants in the various black metal communities to transcend the intentional nihilism and tired aesthetics of the genre, and thus has been both embraced and shunned by the black metal community. Hunter makes the argument for a hybridized black metal, with black metal is traditionally one of the uh, most dogmatic sounds and sort of popular music culture. Uh, this new sound is, quote, an act of renihilation, but spiritually, it transforms nihilism into an aforementioned, that's from the manifesto. Hunter states in an interview with emerging art theorist Amelia Ishmael that he is highly influenced by the work of German conceptual artist Joseph Beuys, uh, to the extent that Hunter has performed the manifesto under Beuys' Eurasia Siberian Symphony 1963. It's from 1966, don't let that confuse you. Uh, you may have seen it. It's a chalkboard with like a top hat drawn on some like skis or 
and a dead rabbit up top. Um, that's what that is for. Uh, and the band liturgy themselves have performed a MoMA in front of uh, Boise's uh, Eurasianstab uh, from 1966-67. Boise's mission, as John Moffat states in Occultism and the Avant-Garde Art, quote, was not so much to be artistic as to educate all, quote, humanity, end quote. Hunter believes in a deeper meaning than most people within the black metal community are aware of. To this effect, Hunter sees liturgy as a culmination of everything that's ever happened in history and is an active window for transcendence. This insertion of liturgy into the history is similar to how Boyce created a legend for himself as part of his corpus that blurs the line between historic accuracy and historic envisioned fiction. Uh, Boyce was a Luftwaffe pilot, pilot during the World War, uh, Second World War and was shot down over the Soviet Union. And the story goes, he, the only way he survived was he was taken in by a group of nomads who covered his body in animal fat and wrapped him in wool felt blankets. These two elements, animal, uh, animal fats and wool blankets, were used extensively in his body of work. Uh, most famously in America, in I Like America and America Likes Me, where he hung out with a coyote in your room for a week. Um, Boy saw art as a way of educating and creating a style of performance called actions that were meant to teach a specific thing to the audience. In much the same manner of the public educating, Hunter has read, performed his manifesto while performing as liturgy in the rock, in rock venues, bringing the academia into the bar. As Hunter paraphrases Henry Miller, quote, the world is already dead, but it still needs someone to shove a grenade in its ass. In the terms of black metal, the insertion of the grenade is an affirmative gesture, end quote. This will lead to a Nietzschean self-overcoming and allow participants to finally overcome their own nihilism, to bite the head off the snake, as Nietzsche would put it. Uh, likewise, Boise's How to Explain Pictures to a Dead Hair from 1965 was an attempt to broaden the definition of art and culminated with what later was coined social sculpture, now we call it social practice. Uh, the performance of Hunter's Manifesto in rock venues and liturgy performing in MoMA or the Danish National Gallery are attempts to redefine the role and reception of black metal music. I have a minute and a half clip uh, of the MoMA performance. So you can kind of get a better idea. In conclusion, uh, just like yeah. Boy's influence art, ethics, politics, pedagogy, and spirituality, Hunter has created a venue within, in itself, that urges the transcending of self from the nihilism of daily life. This is an example of two creative figures of different arts, such as music, the art world, uh, or literature, or even different domains of society, uh, religion, art, philosophy. All while uh, defending their actions by a lack of interest in the world of institutional critique. The use of old-fashioned symbolism, the desire to save the world by means of art, and to live every moment as art, and to create political institutions as art allows both artists and philosophers to step outside the boundaries of what is uh, expected as an artist. <laughs>